What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overlord here. She's talking about Scream 6 in this video here today. Going over some comments Jenna Ortega had related to her character, Tara Carpenter. What we can expect from the character in the upcoming sequel that is set in New York. And also touch on a theory of mine related to Roman Bridger and this stuff Viewer and I put out and how I can see this faction into Scream 6. But just to touch on Jenna Ortega really quick. Jenna Ortega had an interview recently with Deadline. They were asking like 20 questions or something like that. They brought up Scream 6 and these were her comments. She said they were shooting in Montreal and it was lovely she said but it was just a lot more intense and it says here Ortega especially enjoyed fleshing out her character this time around after her first go around in screen five she was only ever crying and screaming on the floor so on this second one I had to interact with my other castmates and give her some sort of a personality those comments make me very open or very uh Excited to see what they're going to do with Tara in Scream 6. I know a lot of people, myself included, think that even though the Carpenter sisters' bond was very heartwarming in that fifth movie, Tara definitely was relegated to the sidelines due to, of course, what happened in the opening, her spending most of the movie in the hospital. So getting to see her up and about and a lot more involved this time around with Sam is definitely, I say, going to make that duo a lot more enjoyable to just see them together because I really do think that they are a good pairing when it comes to playing on-screen siblings. I think those two have great chemistry and Tara herself, knowing that she is friends with the targets in screen five it did feel a little weird to not see her interact with them as much as we got to see them interact with each other at the party and then of course in the earlier portion of the film outside of the school and then of course when they went to go visit tara that was the only time we really saw them interact with her so getting to see tara interact with the ones that are left anyway chad and mindy that's going to be very good to see Jenna herself has already touched on the fact that she will get to interact with Mindy, so I can't wait to see what happens there. I do expect that perhaps what will happen is she will have some new group of friends making up this new cast that we have. So these are going to be her Blackmore friends. So those people I can see being her Blackmore friends definitely would be Liana Liberato's character and then the character played by Jack Champion. Those two I can see being her college mates in Blackmore and then she has her new friends or her returning friends from Woodsboro in Chad and Mindy and then of course her sister. So just to touch on this little thing from Viewer Anon and flesh this out into how I can see it playing in Scream 6. Viewer Anon again shared some deleted so there some images of a deleted scene from Scream 3 where we would have gotten to see a little bit more context as to how this voice changer came to be. This multi-capable voice changer that Roman had in Scream 3 that allowed him to basically use anyone's voice at will. This scene that was deleted would have showcased Ghostface in what looks like a, a layer putting together and com compiling all of the voices, the audio bits of the people's voices and transferring them over into a device, I guess, thus showing us how the voice changer was born. Again, I think that that voice changer was very much so ahead of its time, but given the context of the movie and that it's not set in the 2010s, that is why when rewatching Scream 3, that is still a plot device that many people are not in favor of because given the context of what year it's set in, this does not make a lot of sense. However, that was one of the more, I would say, passable things out of the plethora of others they expected us to believe only one man had done on his own the voice changer while i get some people find it to be over the top i thought it was pretty cool i also just do not think it was the most effective plot device i do think that while the the concept is cool applying it in this genre especially this franchise at that time period in 2000 when we're not in the 2010s or even the 2020s like we are now with all these capabilities being a thing it just came off unrealistic however with these things that have been dropping online, there is the uh, discussion about Ghostface using evidence from other killing sprees in the upcoming six movie. So what if one of those bits of evidence is Roman Bridger's voice changer? Now more than ever would be a much more realistic and believable time to have a voice changer like that come into effect or come into play for a person who is trying to go around commit a new spree of Ghostface killings. If you bring that voice changer back, that plot device, I think it will go over a lot well, a lot more better today than it did in 2000. I'm not saying that everyone will be on board with it. I also do know that there are people out there who are against it because of how it was born in bad context. I just think that it could exist 
in today's world of Scream, given all the technological advancements we've had over the years. And to see it used in Scream 6, I wouldn't be against it. I wouldn't be against seeing Ghostface utilizing this, borrowing Sam's voice, borrowing Tara's voice, borrowing, borrowing Chad and Mindy's voice, borrowing Gail's voice. Of course, borrowing as many voices as you could, it would have to tell you that this is somebody who's clearly been in contact with all of these cast members. But I think that a voice changer device like that could be a lot more digestible in today's climate and the environment given all of the technological advances would you want to see roman bridger's voice changer return in scream 6 if that is one of the pieces of evidence that get brought up during the murder sprees that transpire in new york or would you want to see that left in the past because you found that to be a completely ridiculous plot device you can let me know that down in the comment section below i myself personally again think that the, that, that voice changer ha had potential it was just not utilized at the appropriate time it was unrealistic given the context and then bringing it back now might just be for some people reliving a nightmare for me i'm open to seeing it now because it makes a lot more sense and you could even poke at how it was so ahead of its time and they could even joke about well how did roman managed to even create this device how did he create it we could have discussions about that obviously that would just be in line with what you expect from scream poking fun at itself all of the tongue-in-cheek stuff that we know this franchise likes to do you could do stuff like that where they're just obviously poking fun at the negative criticisms that exist around that third movie related to this device that roman had so i think that it could work if they bring it back for a sixth movie i would like to see obviously and here's the other thing since only one of them exists to our knowledge the you could probably do something where if there is multiple ghost faces let's even pretend there's a cult if there's a cult of ghost faces that happens in the sixth movie you could do something where the leader of the cult is the one who's obviously using that voice changer the other ones they're not getting anything like that they're just using the standard ghost face voice changer however they're doing that but the leader was always you're always going to know when you're talking to the leader because the leader would be someone who is changing transitioning from the ghost face traditional voice roger l jackson's iconic voice to then sounding like gail sounding like sam sounding like chad and mindy and everyone else involved in new york that way you can set the differences between the leader of the cult and then the regular old the regular below bar cult members not to say that there is a cult but again if they want to play it like that since there's only one device that's how i can see it playing out let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below if you haven't already of course make sure you subscribe turn on post notifications and miss a video in the description i will have links on my social media accounts i am on facebook twitter and instagram you can message me there of course to let me know if there's any movies news or reviews you like me to cover in the future and with all that in mind guys i will see you in the next video